It's day four, you guys, of mini session week. 24 hours left of this twice a year week that we do. We do it once in the spring and once in the fall where we just focus on mini sessions and we put the course 50% off so that you guys can hop into it without any excuses, without any hesitation, um, because we really just want you guys to um, do well this season. And I'm, I'm gonna go back over here while I talk to you guys. All right, so here I am in front of my house. <laughs> and the thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about it are the three things that I look for when location scouting mini sessions. Um, and what's funny is that I think a lot of new photographers or when you're in your first year of business, you're just trying everything that you can do to to make sure you do everything right so you don't mess up because you're already like feeling insecure. You already have imposter syndrome. And so like the thing that, you know, you do is like, okay, I have to have the perfect location and I have to like drive 30 minutes to the next city over and I have to do what everybody else is doing and all these things. Well, um, when, <laughs> what I think a lot of photographers miss is their knowledge about light and what people, your clients really, really need and want. And so I'm gonna talk about the three things that I look for when I'm location scouting, if I want a new location. Um, and I'm gonna really show you where I take photos, even though they're not like, this isn't the best location ever. I have done many a mini session and I can post some examples in the group after this live. Um, and I'm gonna show you where I'm going and I'm gonna show you what I'm thinking, but I'm going to teach you today three things that I look for when location scouting. The first two is super simple. And then the last one is like the number one thing that I look for. If you're here, say hello. I know this is like late in the day. Kids are home and all things. So I'm not expecting a huge turnout live, but I know everybody's going to watch the replay because this is going to be a good one. Okay. So first things first is when I go out to location scout, I go during the time that I'm going to shoot the session. So I'm not going to go location scouting or really what I'm doing is light scouting, you know, in the morning or at noon at lunchtime, if I know that I'm going to be shooting in the evening. Okay. So we are in, um, golden hour right now, um, where I live, it, it sunsets around seven 30. It's about six 30. This is probably the time that I would have my last session. And I go over all this in the mini session course, the reasons why I don't schedule my sessions like right before sunset. Um, but, um, this would probably be six 30, six 40 would probably be the last slot that I would have for my mini sessions. Um, but what we're talking about today is location scouting, what I'm looking for. As you can see, I'm like walking into the sun. So this is like, this kind of hurts. Let me put on my sunglasses. Okay, let me go over the first two things that I look for and then I'm gonna talk about the last thing. The first two things that I look for, number one is private property, private land, Pri like I don't want to go into a big metropolis or a big city where my kiddos or my dads are going to get nervous or distracted with people walking by and seeing them. That's the last thing that I want. I want somewhere that's quiet, that they can hear me coach them because I typically have like my 85 on and I'm like yelling at them. Well, they can't hear me if we're like downtown or like it's a busy, busy area. So, um, the first thing I'll look for is private property, which I teach in the mini session course. What I do is I like reach out to my Facebook community and I ask them, does anybody have private land that they wouldn't mind me shooting my mini sessions on in exchange for a free session for you and your family? I always get about half a dozen people reach out to me, um, when I do that. All right, there we go. All right. Um, so that is the first thing is private property. The second thing that I look for is a place to park the car. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this around. Okay, there's my house. I just walked down our little street here. And this field right here is where I would shoot a lot of my mini sessions, especially when Bonnie was a newborn and I did not want to leave my house. Um, I knew I could like, while I was nursing, I could leave for two hours and she would be totally fine. And so 
my checklist was private property number one and so i asked um my neighbor across the street owns this and so i already asked her permission to use this property she's like go for it so that's a check my second thing is a place to park and so they all my mini session clients would park along this here we go okay so good light what do i look for and turn this around so i can show you all right do you see the sun right here all right this is the sun coming through these trees and casting this beautiful light on the ground. So if I were doing a session, I would put my clients here with the sun coming through these trees, casting the glow in their hair. And the reason why this is gonna work, which there's my dad, <laughs> he's gonna stop. Hey dad. I'm teaching live about light. Yeah, about light. You love light? <laughs> Bye. Okay. So we live next door to my parents. That's my dad. And he's going to pull into my driveway because that's where he lives, like right behind this patch of woods. Okay, moving on. So light Sorry. <laughs> here we go light okay so i would put my clients in this little patch of sun and that's i call these like you know glowy lights on the ground and that's how you know where to put them um if you can see here here's my shadow so i'm facing my clients to their shadow I place them here and the reason why this works is because if I turn this over, look out much open sky I have. So I'm all right. I'm not in like right over here. Because this open um sky in front of me. And if you're in the one-on-one -on -one course, you know all about open sky, you know all about diffuse backlighting and the importance of how are we good? Am I still here? Let me know if you can still hear me and, and everything is good. I think I'm glitching out a little bit because I'm like getting out of service. Okay. So again, the third thing that I look for is light, good light. All I need is one tree that blocks the sun that causes diffused backlighting. And what, what that means is there's going to be like some, you see this like glow coming through my hair. That's called backlighting. I want the glow. Let me get a little bit more into it. I want the glow to be coming through my hair and what I do is I use the open sky to fill in any of the shadows. That's what the goodness about open sky is. It fills in all the shadows that are casted with my eyebrow, my nose and everything else. I also am going to have my handy dandy reflector with me um, to just help even more. And what the reflector does is it takes that sunlight, it bounces off the reflector and then fills my client's face. Now, let's just say I accidentally ran over time. The sun is now set mostly like, like I can't see it anymore, but there's still ambient light. What I'm going to do is I'm going to face my clients toward the sun. Um, and then this would be the background if that makes sense. So those are the things that I look for. Again, it doesn't have to be somewhere super amazing or super romantic. It's, this could literally be down your street, your next door neighbor's property. Um, this could be anywhere that in your little, like if you live in a little podunk town, like I think most of us say like, oh, I'm just from a small town and there's nowhere for me to shoot. Yes, there is. You just have to look for it and you have to just look for the right light. Like look how, look how glowy you have to look for the right light, a private property and a location for people to park and then try it out. Bring your kids, bring your husband, ask your girlfriend to come like and say, Hey, can you put on a long flowy dress? And like, let me test out some like location spots that I'm looking in to do my mini sessions. Um, and that's it. You guys like it doesn't have to be complicated. So going over them again, if you're just tuning in live or if you're writing them down, you need to recap the three things that I look for when, there's Lulu. Don't see Lulu. Lulu had to go to the hospital. He's good now. But the three things I look for when location scouting is private property, free, easy parking, 
and good light. Okay. And then when you're there, use all the things that you learned from the one-on-one -on -one course, composition, um, light reflectors, and like use everything that you know, how to get great focus, use everything you know, and implement it into your mini session. So <laughs> I hope this was helpful. I'm going to go ahead and post, um, some pictures. I know the, the, the pictures that I, uh, shot this, these minis were in the fall so the leaves aren't green that they're like golden um so the, the leaves are gonna look a little different but you can see what i did with the light and the location but i hope this was helpful um we have 24 hours left um for you to get lifetime access to the mini session course and 50 percent off um we don't want to give you any reason not to change your life this season, not to get those bookings, those increase, and this potential income this season. Um, so here I go. I'm going to feed my kids some supper, and myself some supper. If you have any questions at all, um, don't hesitate to ask. Reach out. We're here for you. I'm going to go ahead and post the mini session link for you to join us. Um, and tomorrow I'm going to be in here, um, answering some mini session questions. So we're going to do like a live Q and A. So hope this was helpful. Um, y'all comment, let me know, and I'll see you tomorrow.